Hey guys, Operator Drewski here, and today we're going to be talking about a little bit of Squad. Squad is one of those games that I've really been enjoying lately, even more than other Milsim titles, and it's really, really being improved. Actually, looking at their website, looking at all their dev blogs, and even reading the one that came out just today, uh, they are actually doing a quite a bit of work in there. And whatever developer they are, I think they're off-world, I believe, uh, they are doing some good work on their game. So today, I'll be going over all the updates that are coming in the next few weeks of Squad in May 2017. So first off, we've all had problems with low walls. You know the walls that like kind of block an area of, of, of foliage or trees or something that is seriously about three feet tall and you cannot hop over it to save your entire life? Yeah, we've all had problems with those tiny walls in this game and hopping over them is sometimes a really, really big chore. You usually have to hop over them or like try to hop and then crouch in midair just so you can bring your feet up high enough to get over it. It's very, very tough sometimes to get over those walls and now we have a total fix for that. We are bringing in vaulting. Vaulting and jumping is finally going to be in squad so you can easily just hop over those walls and be on your way. And now we don't have to really worry about, you know, I feel like being stuck in compounds that much anymore. I feel like you used to have to walk around some of these sometimes, but now you should be able to easily get over them. And I feel like the more agile, the more, I, I guess, realistic our soldier gets in the squad, the more smooth the combat is going to be. Because you won't have to worry about hopping over with no jump animation, basically, uh, small walls like that anymore. Another thing that I feel like adds to the realism of movement is free look. Free look is the ability to look away from your weapon and be being able to, uh, you know, check your left and your right side while not having to make your gun move the same direction. Maybe you want to cover an angle, but you also want to just peek to your left and right, make sure your your 360 is clear. Having that in a game definitely adds a lot of perception to your player, and now we're getting that in squad. We've seen it in games like Battlegrounds or Arma and things like that, but now that we have it in squad, I think that it's going to change the entire game. Sometimes I'd be walking up behind a group of enemies, and you can clearly see where they're looking just because they're guns are all facing the opposite direction so you can just follow the enemies as long as they don't turn around and as long as you don't see a gun turn the hell around you aren't going to really notice but now if one of those enemies just turns their head very very quickly they might see you before you really see them turning their head so that's always going to be really nice and also there is actually a third person animation for this so in some games if you free look you don't really see it from the outside like in rust for example but in this game you're actually going to see your friendlies and also hostile players free looking so you're going to see their heads turning left and right if they're checking their flanks also, another thing you'll see enemies and friendlies do is lowering their weapons. Uh, holding a gun up, especially something like an M4 or a heavier AK-47 or AKM, whatever you are holding, uh, is very, very tough. If you've even played airsoft or paintball, <laughs> if you've been in the military, you probably know much, much more than paintballers do about how heavy a weapon can get over time. And definitely with something like squad, having everybody hold their weapons straight forwards in a 90 degree angle all the time just kind of looks wonky sometimes. So now they're implementing a method where if you aren't doing anything like shooting or aiming down your sights for a small duration of time then your soldier will lower his weapon realistically so this means that if you're looking at friendlies trying to make a little plan or something you aren't just threatening their lives <laughs> as you're having a small light discussion with them Additionally, now we are able to not only go prone, but go prone realistically. So beforehand, you might be shooting at a hostile and just see his body just plop down to the ground. There were two ways to know if you either did kill this guy or if you didn't kill this guy. If he just plops towards the ground instantly, that means that he laid down and now you can't see him anymore, but he's still alive. But also, if he died, you would actually see him just instantly turn into a ragdoll and slowly fall toward the ground. Now the enemies don't just plop to the ground like they used to, just going a really cheap, kind of weird-looking animation but now they actually have a realistic animation where their hands will go down one hand will take his, his the left hand will go off the weapon and actually reach for the ground and then you see the person actually realistically slowly go from a standing or a crouch all the way down to prone and then also while you are prone you are now able to basically lean while you're prone you can lean around corners to the left or to the right and shuffle around doorways and things like that and therefore you can get really cheeky breaky angles on people if you are uh, smart enough to get a really really good hiding spot so you can peek around the door to the left while you're laying on the right side of a doorway for example and therefore it's going to be a lot harder for enemies to really detect players. Also, two new things in terms of actual combat mechanics have been or will be implemented in the game as well. We're now getting a first look at melee footage and this is a shovel that you can now hit players with. That's going to be pretty neat. So whenever you sneak behind enemies and you don't have ammo left 
Well, now you got a weapon for yourself. It's going to turn into Battlefield 1. Everybody's going to be running around with shovels and things like that. Um, but also, we now have weapon bipoding. This is going to be great for those light machine gunners uh, like me. I'm usually a saw running around with an M249 or an RPK or something like that. And being up on top of a building, not really laying down, meaning that your recoil is very, very hard to control because you're either crouched or standing, is very, very tough. And realistically, you'd easily be able to bipod up on a wall of a building or on a window or in a doorway or something like that you'd be able to easily bipod up in those areas but now you can actually do so you used to not be able to in the game but now you will be able to do so they've added animations in the game uh, that will be coming soon not in the game yet that are, will enable you to put your bipod down on any object whether you're standing crouched or prone and now you'll have better recoil control when you're firing fully auto with an m249 saw also, oh my gosh, did I poop my pants when I saw this? We are now getting the first looks at the concept art of the new Black Hawk helicopter. This is the UH-60M, and they're just now modeling it. It's going to have 14 passengers and one pilot, so I'm going to be interested to see what the pilot gets in terms of weaponry. Probably just a standard iron sight in four or something and a pistol. Um, but this is going to be interesting because, think of it this way, the... US teams are the only teams that are going to be getting this and also probably the Russian teams will probably get some sort of helicopters in the future But I feel like mobility of squads in itself is kind of hard in squad just because there's only a few vehicles You have to go all the way back to your main point to have those vehicles really actually assist you because you have to drive them from your main base All the way to wherever it is and also the maps are very very large having something like helicopters in a game Is going to make it a lot lot more dynamic a lot make it a lot more like project reality over what squad is Which is a little bit slower paced than something like project reality a lot more running uh, In this game than something like project reality just because there's no helicopters and there's a lot less vehicles But this is going to add something that really excites me and then I'll be able to fly a helicopter in the squad maps that's going to be really cool and I'm super excited and I'm really really happy to see helicopters go down in flames especially with the squad animation system like they're they're way too good at special effects basically looks amazing cannot wait to to see a helicopter on fire crashing into me it's gonna be beautiful they're also adding a Glock 17 to the game. There was some footage of that. It's just a Austrian L131A1, uh, and it's going to be a 9mm pistol, probably just going for some special factions or something. They already added an M9, so maybe this is going to replace the M9 in some certain factions of the U.S. Army or U.S. military. Uh, they're going to replace the M9 with a Glock, but we'll see. It's showing a U.S. military soldier, like a U.S. Army soldier here with Scorpion camo holding the Glock 17, so I don't know. Maybe we'll get a Glock 17 as... Uh, as the US Army or something now I'm not really sure but now with helicopters coming into the game we also have an anti-aircraft gun this is the ZO-23 this is a Russian made I believe uh, anti-aircraft gun and this thing is like a 23 millimeter I believe and it's going to pack a punch if you get hit by that it's going to be very very dangerous to a Black Hawk or something so if you were to set something like this up in something like a fob it's going to be very hard for a black hawk to fly over and get some good lz's especially when there's an a gun looking at you the entire time also because russia doesn't exactly use the old rpg 7s much anymore they are now implementing the rpg 29 which is a much more improved version of the older rpgs that the russian army currently uses so this is going to be firing a 105 tandem warhead similar to the rpg 7 in game but it's just going to be a little bit more lore friendly to what actual russian forces would use versus something like just an RPG-7. And this rocket is designed not really for anti-infantry, but more like a heavy anti-tank. It's going to be used against heavy armor and medium armor at far distances. It's not going to be something that's just used for shooting at infantry like the frag rockets out of an RPG-7. We also have a new map that I'm pretty excited for. Any green maps in a game I'm always excited for because I'm kind of sick of fighting in deserts a lot. <laughs> but uh, we're getting a new Eastern European map called Narva, and it's this big city town with a lot of light hills outside. It looks really, really highly detailed, and honestly, I'm very, very hyped. I mean, just look at that picture. Look how big that island, that area is, that city is. It just, I'm really sparking my interest about this game even more after I watch more and more like dev blogs. I really like the city maps because usually on even high end PCs they actually are pretty good in terms of frame rate and so I like squad in that because in any city as detailed as this one in something like Arma you'd be getting 25 frames with with a 40 versus 40 match you'd be getting oh you'd be getting such bad frames but with this you're actually getting very very solid frame rates especially on those higher end PCs uh, with something like a very very detailed city so I'm really excited for this map uh, definitely 
happy to see where that goes, as well as the Alba's Raw map is going to be totally redone. I think they're adding a whole new area to the south side. Uh, these pictures here will show you some of the south side that they've added, just some more streets and stuff. I think that they found that the south area of the map was a little bit too light in terms of buildings, so they're adding a whole new area of complexes there. So that'll add some more action to the game and make it a little bit harder to move into those southern areas because it's not just an empty desert anymore. It's going to be a lot of buildings and stuff. And they still, I think, plan to expand this map in the future. I think it's still a work in progress. Again, squad is still in alpha, so all of this is still a work in progress but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the video uh if you liked the squad updates if you didn't like the squad updates make sure to leave a like or a dislike uh and also comment on what you think about the squad updates did you, did you like them do you, are you are you hyped for helicopters or are you hyped for the for for new animation i'm definitely hyped for a free look and vaulting basically and i still can't wait for helicopters because i'm a really helicoptery guy but uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next one hope you enjoyed and have a good day everybody